A local nonprofit organization headquartered in Lakeland serving all of Polk County and the surrounding communities is dedicated to improving the lives of pets and people. After a four month search, their board of directors has selected their next executive director and we will introduce you to her right here next on Polk Place. Welcome to Polk Place and I'm your host Brian Lacey and joining me in studio is the new executive director for SPCA Florida, Shelly Thayer. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be here. Congratulations on the new gig. Thank you. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see, the cool thing about it is you remember, you've got the <laughs> rules down. We've got uh, Mina. Mina. This yeah. Is Mina. So what's the story with Mina? Well, Mina's a sweet little girl. She's a little nervous because it's raining outside and it was oh, yeah. thundering when we came in, but she's very sweet. She lost her family. Um, her owner passed away in 2016. And um, so she has been looking for a home ever since. She did go out a couple of times, but what she really wants is what we're finding out is someone who is probably retired. She wants a lap. She wants to really be a cuddler and um, like um, sort of the Chihuahua mix type. They, they really are quite the magnet. They, once they find someone they love, which is quite quickly, uh, they, they really want to sit around. So if, if you're, um, you work and have a big, heavy schedule, that's not the best home environment for her. So she um, is good with um, dogs and with cats. Uh, little kids kind of scare her uh, a bit, and so she's a little shy uh, of, of children. So again, probably a quieter home. That's what she had, mm -hmm. and that's what she's looking for again. And if they have a forever home for her, just go through you guys, give a call. Absolutely, give us a call. Um, we'll be standing by really looking for um, her forever home, and um, I know it's out there. And somebody in Polk County is going to want this little girl. She's very, very sweet. She, she rides great in the car, by the way. She is adorable. Yeah. She's just a little uh, skittish at the moment. Not yes, too sure about is. these bright lights. Right. Well, it was like I said, it was thundering, and we went by the donut place, and we didn't go in, and she got very upset about that. <laughs> Would you so, call her a donut chihuahua? She's a donut chihuahua. That's yeah. hilarious. I love that. She's like, so, donuts. So now I, I'm going to put mm -hmm. you on the spot for y your first executive decision. Okay. I, I, we need to negotiate. See, All right. Uh, the gig is good here at the county, and, and we have a lot of fun, and, and we get the message out for whoever we're working with. But, okay. but sometimes the, the fringe benefits include what you guys do. Uh, are we going to be guaranteed animals for the most part every time you come in? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we're open seven days a week to serve the county and the people in the county who love animals. And we have a lot of animals here, Brian, with, um, you know, being the third largest county in the state, uh, and a lot of farmland. We have many, many animals, and they just keep breeding while it's warm out. Oh, of yeah. course, it's always warm out in Florida. So we have a lot of animals who need our support and need our help. You would not believe what it does to some of our employees. It's, uh, I mean, we're a creative environment to mm -hmm. begin with, but you get about eight, ten of us around any animal. We're just like little kids. Let me hold it. Let me hold it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that happens when this yeah, time and oh you're yeah. welcome to hold them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So let's talk a little okay. bit about, um, let's talk a little bit about what brought you to Polk mm. County. Uh, let's yeah, let's talk question. about uh, a little bit about uh, yeah. your past uh, yeah. as, as far as jobs go. Okay. Well, I have an interesting past. Um, I've always been, I, um, involved with animals all my life. Never really thought of animal welfare as a career though. I started out in marketing and um, that was um, really promoting people and their brands and their products and so forth and that's what I did. And it took me from Michigan to Chicago to California. And then from there Hurricane Katrina brought me into the animal world and I went for two weeks and I stayed for five months and my life was forever changed. So then I lived in a tent for three years um, going from one disaster to the next whether it may be man-made or um, or um, uh, a natural disaster and so I think we'll probably be getting a disaster team together here in Polk County which would be a great thing to do because Brian what happens is in a national disaster if you're not trained after what happened with Katrina you're not going to be able to get in so we're going to be working with our staff members all 80 some people to get them trained for natural disasters so we will be able to help the people and the animals in Polk County should something happen. 
That so is. that's part of my background. <laughs> and most recently mm -hmm. came from Sarasota area? I did. I was working over there as the executive director for nine years. Actually, um, uh, some members of um, the um, SPCA Florida came over and asked me to do a consultation a year ago. So I did, and I came over and I fell in love with SPCA Florida. Thought it was a great organization, saw tremendous potential for even more growth than uh, what they have done. And so when I decided to make a change, um, it just happened that it came right together. Um, SPCA Florida was looking for an executive director. I was looking for a new position. It was the time and it was just perfect. And so I'm really pleased um, that I'm here. One of the benefits of the job, and, and every time I go over there, I think the, the word that I love that they describe the facility is as a campus. Yes. You, as an executive director, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of resources mm -hmm. at your disposal. Talk to me about uh, the, the things that, that you have that, that, that you're going to be able to improve upon or, or tweak one way or the other. Well, what I really like is that we have, you know, our adoption center is open seven days a week. We have dogs, we have cats, puppies, kittens, and we have resources to help people who need resources, who may be struggling to, to keep their, their animals because they don't have enough food. They might have lost their job. They need some help for a short term or even a long term. We're there to help them. We help them with food. We help them with um, different kinds of support and sometimes medical support as well. So our clinic, we try to keep our prices down in our clinic so that we can reach out to the community community members. I have a program in place that I hope to, to pull the trigger on in the next couple months. It's really going to benefit some people here who may be thinking that they can't keep their animal because of a medical uh, a problem and, and I'm hoping that we have a solution for that in the next 60 days that everybody will have a resource and it'll be SPCA Florida. Talk about the importance. I mean, mean is the uh, uh, perfect <laughs> example of, of being able to keep a, a pet in a home mm -hmm. forever. Talk about mm -hmm. the the mm -hmm. potential for that program yeah. and, and, and letting it work for people and for the animal itself. Well, everyone, we hope everyone has a plan. You know, when they go into a home, it's a big responsibility. This is a fur family member from then on. You know, this little guy, she ended up, or I'm sorry, I'm gender challenged <laughs> always. Um, she is, um, she is a victim of her owner not having a plan. And so even sometimes with good intentions, and it's not because they're moving or whatever, it might be because they just passed on, there's no one to care for the animal. Lots of times people will think the relative will come in or a neighbor might step in, but they might have animals or they have children and that or, or busy lives and they just don't want another four-footed animal. Or maybe they have an animal that doesn't like other animals. So there needs to be a plan in place. This little kid, he's lucky. She's um, been able to come in and um, we're gonna stick by her side and give her whatever she needs mentally and physically until she lands into a loving home. But um, I, and that's one thing I think I encourage everybody to do. If you have animals, we never, we always think we're, we're gonna be here forever. And so sometimes we don't make plans for our animals and everyone needs a plan. And, if, um, and that's another program we're gonna be working on uh, now that I'm here is, is um, lifetime care. And that'll be a program so that people can sign up their animals so that they know should something happen to them, um, they will have a plan and a place with us and we'll find them a home and track them forever for the rest of their lives. What are some of the other things that you would like to see, uh, that you'd like to implement mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. SPCA Florida's mm -hmm. plans that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that really make a difference for the, the, the mm -hmm. pet owner and the pet here within uh, Polk County? Well, I think, I think the, the big thing is um, getting our population control under, under control. Um, being the third largest county, we also have that one of the highest euthanasia rates here. Uh, it's just because there's only, in the county I came from, we probably had seven organizations helping the people in that county, which is much smaller than Polk County. And here we have two, Humane Society and Animal Services and us, which makes three, um, SPCA Florida. So that's not very many for the population that we have here and the, the, the land mass that we actually have here. So um, we need to, to work harder and a little bit smarter so that we're able to help more animals and really change the odds for these guys so that they have a chance to live. Um, so some of the programs um, that I'll be looking at is saving all the kittens every year 
being able to have enough foster care because it's just about foster care. Like you could be a foster. You could take a family of kittens. <laughs> I, like how, I like how you're promoting me. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. You, could, you too could be a foster. And, and in the summertime, it's a wonderful family project. So it's a great thing to do with the family. Um, kids can help learn how to bottle feed kittens. And they're truly our lifesavers. So, so there's a lot. My goal is to become in 2025 a no-kill county by 2025. That is the goal nationwide. So we're on that, that bandwagon to, to save them. I think with the gig that I have, I'm, I'm lucky to see the behind the scenes. We've, we've come out and helped you mm -hmm. with, with video projects. And I think the Thank most you. relaxed I've ever been is there's like a little area where all the little kittens are playing. Mm -hmm. And you can just sit there mm -hmm. and they just like all run around you. It is, it is so probably the most incredible feeling to have that much love. And they're just like, hey, how you doing? You got yeah. food in that pocket? Yeah. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, Every it day's is. a good day. <laughs> right? Well, one way um, that uh, uh, really brought you to this county is is the board of directors, uh, the true. process in that hiring you. Talk about the importance mm -hmm. of, of having a board mm -hmm. with the vision of of what's best for this county and the animals and, mm -hmm. and the animal owners. Talk to me a little bit about that. I'm glad you asked that question because it's not just the board, it's the staff as well and the volunteers and the people who work there who are volunteering their time. I was most taken by the, the mission. And to me, that's, that's when everybody's working and they're moving in the same direction, you're actually able to get things done. And that's what we need in animal welfare. Um, uh, that seems to be a very passionate area. Uh, people have a lot of opinions. And I'll tell you, this board is working together. It's very, very solid. Um, they're all on one mission and one, and they're all on one focus, and that is the animals. It's not about anything else but saving the animals and doing the best job we possibly can with the animals. This kid is just like squirming. There we go. <laughs> She's like, okay, I just needed that. <laughs> but, um, um, but that's so, I was really excited to have a board that was so focused. Um, it, that, just, that just is miles ahead of, of, yeah, of the game because you, you're already on the same page and, and you just have to set that goal. And then the staff was the same way, very focused on the, on the animals, not focused on each other or, or anything that's off the animals. And so now you've got a, a little army, you know, all charging with the same goal. So I was really pleased with that. And everybody I've met in this county is just incredible. I mean, I had no idea um, when I came over here. It was about the job, not about the county. But everyone seems to be on the same page. And I, if ever we can change the destiny of these animals, I think it's here. I really do. And um, I, I was looking for a challenge. I really was looking for a challenge. And um, I found it. I found it here in Polk County. One of the things that you mentioned, volunteers and, and nonprofits just like government really have to do more mm -hmm. with less. Mm -hmm. um, talk about the role that your volunteers are going to play in helping you accomplish your mission. And then also, um, you know, as we said, doing more with less, uh, inviting new community partners mm. to come in and, and be part of yeah. the SPCA Florida experience. Thank you. Yes, we need, right now, we need more fosters, more people to, and fostering is could be a week or two weeks or three weeks, but it saves a life. And then, and then they, they give the um, anal, animals back to us and we supply everything. If they need the supplies, we supply everything. So fostering is an, an area of need. Another area of need is help with our dogs so that they get out three times a day at least, that they get play time. And now you can rent a dog. A family uh, yeah. came today of three we kids. We featured that and program last yeah, month and that is that very wonderful? cool. I know, I think it's great, and they're trying to expand that to Saturdays so that um, people on Saturday can, can go, and, and it's a wonderful family um, event or a date event. Let's go rent a dog for the day, <laughs> and it's free. There is no rent yeah. <laughs> involved, and so, so that's really good. Um, so there's many things that, that, um, that the adults can do. So we're looking for people who have some extra time and really want to do something that makes them feel good that they've made a difference. And I'll tell you, the dogs that need to go out or the cats who need a lap to sit on, they love it. And we provide the training, we keep everybody very safe, and we could use the community's help. I mean, these are the community's animals. Many of them, them have been abandoned, left behind. Um, we're their only voice. And um, for a proud community like, like Polk County, um, 
I, I'd hope more people will step up. We need financial support, of course. It's a nonprofit organization, so it, the more animals we help, the more money it takes. So we're hoping that you know people will be compassionate and reach out with their hearts and their wallets and and help us. But um, and, and that's how a mission gets accomplished. And and certainly, I think everybody here is on that same page. So there's lots of ways to, ways um, to assist us. And I've got to commend your staff. Um, oh, they they come in. And whether it's w whether they're promoting an event that's a fundraising event for you, or whether they're promoting something that's you know an awareness month, mm -hmm. uh, but the the fundraising aspect mm -hmm. of your staff, mm -hmm. they're they're way ahead of the game, and and they work and, hard. and and they are absolutely incredible, and yeah. and you've got a great staff to do. to work with. I so. do. I feel so fortunate. Again, great board, great staff, great attitude really committed as I've been you know I've been talking to all my staff in the first few weeks because I just got here and I've been here three weeks I've tried to talk to as many as possible I am amazed at how many people will drive even an hour to get to work every day because this is where they want to be this is what they want to do they want to make a difference in the lives of these animals and so the commitment is really strong here um, to, to help everybody so including you <laughs> so, so being being new to the area got to talk non animals yeah. okay. find any new places that you like any places oh to eat gosh. I mean <laughs> well, that that's good I found Harry's I don't know if I can oh, say yeah. oh you can't go that wrong just, that just happened by accident yeah, I decided yeah. to drive that way and I uh, found that and found swans yeah. I love that yeah. about it you know it's I I never I don't think in my life ever um, taken on a challenge because of the area that I lived in I always took on the challenge because of the job and the mission and and what needed to be accomplished and so I knew nothing about Lakeland and then I'm like, where am I? I'm, I'm in the middle of the state, yeah. and um, I don't know anything about it. And um, I know it's home of Publix, because I keep finding Publix <laughs> grocery stores. And, um, uh, but um, it's lovely here. It's lovely. I, I I know my way to work and home. Yeah, that's about it. And, and you got two thousand so miles. <laughs> you have two thousand square miles to play with. So really, you know, I know. I am so interested about, in seeing more. I think it's like more. seventeen communities. So yeah, it's so this this is going to be much bigger than what I'm accustomed to. I'm not afraid of it though. It's like bring it on. I'm ready. I'm I want to see all the areas. I haven't been to animal services yet. That's coming up um, uh, next week on Monday. So I'm excited about that to work in collaboration with everyone because it takes us all working together to see what we can do and what we can create. So I'm excited about being in this county. And I have to say the people are amazing here. I feel like I'm in more south though <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in this area than I have been before. Well, Shelley, welcome <laughs> to the community, and, and we look forward to the, the wonderful things you're going, you're going to be doing with SPCA Florida, and, Thank and you. We, we look forward to helping you promote whatever it is you're going uh, to need help with. Thank, Thank you very you. much for, for joining Thank us. Thank you. And, and actually, the dog is now one, just finally settled one, down. One last, <laughs> one last promo. Right, yeah. Nina, you Nina need a good needs, home, right, baby? That's right. She says, I'm ready. I'm ready to go home. And yeah, she is. Thank you. All right. Thanks for All joining right. us, Shelley. Thank I appreciate you so it. Much. SPCA Florida's Board of Directors has selected Shelley Thayer as their next Executive Director to lead the 39-year-old nonprofit animal welfare organization. Previously the Executive Director for Cat Depot in Sarasota, she has worked with Best Friends Animal Society, assisting with several major rescue operations and co-authoring rapid response procedures. She has led the charge and rally for wildlife rescue and rehabilitation domestic animal rehabilitation, and big cat rescues. Now, if you need more information on SPCA Florida, you can give them a call at 863-646-7722 or look them up on the web at www.spcaflorida.org.